Evening everyone, thanks for joining us for the first uh, Northampton Society of Architecture online event. Uh, this evening we're really lucky to be joined by Tom Jagger from GSS, who's going to present to us um, uh, details of his new extension and alterations project for Northampton Museum and Art Gallery. Uh, I think it's going to be a really exciting um, upgrade to the town's cultural quarter and be a fantastic addition. Um, we will be doing a Q&A session after. If anyone's got any questions um, as Tom goes through his presentation, it'd be great if you could just use the toolbar. Uh, there's a Q&A section on there. If you could just add that, that would be brilliant. And we'll get to those after. But uh, for now, Tom, thanks again for coming on. It's over to you. Great, thanks for that, Will. Just get my slides up. OK, thank you all for joining. My name's Tom Jagger, as Will said, and I'm an associate at GSS Architecture. And this presentation is about the Northampton Museum and Art Gallery redevelopment. So starting with the site as existing. So this is the Guildhall up at the top of the road here. This is Guildhall Road and the existing museum sits just here. To the west, we've got the old jail block. And then to the east here, we've got the what we call the Guildhall Road block. And interestingly, the museum and the jail were originally one jail building. They were then split off. The museum has been effectively rebuilt and the jail has been repurposed a couple of times. Um, there's a level change. So you enter the museum from Guildhall Road here. There's a considerable level change dropping down so that this door you can see on the end of the jail block is a whole story lower than the entrance of the museum. So we have the upper ground where the, you enter and the lower ground, which is the lowest floor of the jail block there. So the county council moved out of these two buildings, the jail and the Guildhall Road block to move into their new HQ. That left them vacant and the borough council purchased them. So the project that we were faced with was to extend the museum into those vacant buildings, primarily into the jail block, but in the end we used a bit of the Guildhall Road block as well. The existing link here was a bridge that essentially linked the two uh, council buildings. So we demolished that, as you see up here, and that made space for a new extension to link the two sides. So here you can see Guildhall at the top of the road there and that's the museum and then this sandstone building on the left is the Guildhall roadblock as we've been calling it. There's been some really interesting finds and it's been really interesting crawling around these historic buildings. We've got some of the vaulted structure there on the left of the lower ground floor or the museum basement. The central picture here you can just make out stepping up this brick facade they're the traces of the old gallows, which were to the west of the old jail block at the back of Sessions House. Uh, the last public hanging there took place in 1852. And then also you can see on the right here some of the existing cast iron bars still present in some of the windows. So in terms of the site plan, again, you can see the museum and the jail block and the Guildhall Road block. And this was used for planning, so it shows the change of use from office use that we required for the jail block and for part of the Guildhall Road block. And then in dark purple is the extension that we added, which allowed us to connect the various buildings without compromising the existing internal spaces and adding circulation where we didn't want it. And going forward, the plan is going to be turned now for the rest of the presentation. So north from now on is right. This is a museum public circulation diagram. So I'm going to take you through the existing and proposed plans now level by level. And it's worth noting that what I'm presenting is phase one of a larger master plan. So in the end, we will use more of the, or the museum will use more of the Guildhall roadblock for gallery space. But currently we had a limited budget, so we could only do phase one Phase two might happen in five to eight years, 10 years, we don't know. So the current circulation route, the public circulation route at least, is currently more complicated than it will be in the end. 
So we're going to start at level zero. You enter here through the existing entrance. And the entrance is off Gilder Road, as I've just said, and the existing museum here is highlighted in purple. We've got an existing plan on the left with demolition shown, proposed on the right. The link bridge here was demolished and that had associated sort of outbuildings underneath as well. And that we also created a large opening to the left here after you've come in and through into this double height space, with a large opening that takes you through into the courtyard. The extension that we added, it links the existing museum through to this circulation core of the jail block, and that allowed us to use the existing stairs and lift. It also allowed us to retain this double height hall, which was the shoe gallery, as a letterable flexible space, which is called the central hall now. And if we hadn't added the extension in the courtyard, that would have been inevitably compromised by adding circulation straight through. The spaces in the jail, the green indicates refurbished space. The spaces in the jail have been used to create a temporary exhibition gallery and a new studio. We've created a new cafe in part of the Gilder Road block down at the bottom here. And because there's about a metre level difference, to use that part of the building and gain access, we actually had to demolish a whole floor. I'll we'll see that in a second. And then we've got a new reception space, which is set further into the building in this double height area, existing double height area, which really puts it more at the heart of the building. So here we can see some of the demolition photos so on the left there where we demolished the existing link, we revealed a historic arch because originally the museum, the jail block and the museum had a ramped link from Guildhall Road all the way to this as their front door. So we wanted to carefully reveal that and it was important that we kept that as a feature inside the proposed extension. And on the right here, you can see where we had to remove part of the whole floor to make the levels work for the kitchen and that will become apparent on the on the plan here on the uh, sorry the section here so the top elevation here is from Angel Street looking towards on the left the jail block on the right the Gilder Road block and then just through the gap between the buildings you can see the extension which we'll look at in more detail in a bit and then on the bottom here is a section through the link north to south and you can see here that the floor, which was present here, has been demolished, which lets us get through at this sort of mid floor level and then step down to gain access to this area here, which was an additional cafe seating area. And then the arch is present on the left. So we're going to go down a floor now into the remaining new extension portion of the building. So essentially you've gone through the building on the upper ground floor, through the extension, down the stair core in the jail block, and then you come through and into the ground floor where we have used the entire footprint of the extension as shoe gallery. And then in addition, we've taken one bay of the existing vaulted structure of the museum, and we've used that to create more shoe gallery space. Also really important on this floor, we created a holding area at the back here for museum deliveries. And we use an existing void in the building, which actually has been introduced in the past, so it wasn't always a void, but we utilise that void for a new goods lift. And that's crucial in letting the museum deliver and gain access to all the floors nicely and easily without going through the public spaces. And this shows that void that we used to introduce the goods lift, quite convenient. And this shows some of the vaulted structures present in the jail block, but also in the museum. And then some construction photos here. Uh, bottom left, you can see the extension ground floor slab going in. Uh, in terms of structure, the extension was an interesting strategy because we had created a plinth at lower ground floor of in situ concrete 
And then on top of that, we placed a lightweight steel frame, which was able to bear onto the existing masonry on three sides. So uh, allowed us to get some good clear spans and prevented too many columns being required. And then on the right here, you can see the vaulted part of the structure that I just mentioned that became, became part of the shoe gallery. So we had to take out a lot of thick intermediate walls to create this long gallery vaulted space. So now quickly run through the upper two floors quickly because in this phase we've not been able to do much other than a refresh to the existing galleries in terms of public space. So to gain access from the lower ground floor, you have to go up the stair core, back through the extension, back into the existing museum, and then you use the existing museum circulation, vertical circulation. And so what we've got here is the light grey is a refresh to the art gallery, but then we do have new office space that we are giving the museum on this floor of the jail block, which essentially is just repurposing the previous council offices. And then on the top floor, the existing history gallery again gets a refresh with vacant space ready for new galleries in the future. So one of the interesting things that we sort of learned through this project is that essentially a museum consists of two interconnected domains. Interconnected domains, each of those has two security levels. So starting with public spaces, you've got public collection, such as galleries and non-collection, such as cafes, shops, etc. But then linked in with that, you've got the private spaces again collection and non-collection. So you've got the stores and archives, but then you've also got offices and kitchens. And it's important that you maintain logistics routes between those two spaces. So as a, as a member of the public, you might see these concealed doors, but there's a whole maze of spaces behind there. And crucial to the success of this was adding the goods lift in this central location, which rises through the floors and allows access, not just in this phase, but for future phases. So now I'm going to quickly run through a VR tour that we put together. Just to sort of show the space a bit better. So you just come through the entrance and this is the new reception space. Those of you who might be familiar with the museum in the past, you would have gone through here and gone into the shoe gallery. Well, this now becomes a letterable great hall space with projection. I think it's got seven projectors in this space, so you can project on the back wall and onto the side walls as well. And then going back through and around the corner, this was the existing shop, but it has been extensively refurbished. And we introduced this glass screen here, so that acts as a shop window as you walk through. But unlike a lot of museums, you don't have to walk through the shop as you exit the museum. So that's the entrance through there. Cloakroom through there is important because um, parents and young families are a, a really large user group. So cloak and pram storage is imperative. And then this is the large opening that we've created in the existing structure. And that takes you through to the new link. So we spent a long time looking at options for this space and we'll go through those in a bit more detail shortly. We've got the sort of cafe part of the link here with a servery. But then also you can go down the stairs here. Where we've removed the floor up there to gain access into this space, which is a new cafe. And importantly, this cafe gives you exposure. Um, in terms of museum and sort of displaying to the public, this cafe gives them exposure onto the Guildhall Road. So as you walk past, there's that visual interest. It was really important for the museum that we concentrated on providing the income generated ge generating spaces in this phase. So we've got the cafe, which they didn't have before. We've got a selling gallery. We've got the letterable space in the form of that great hall. And then through this door, which we can't go through in this tour, but through that door takes you to the jail block and the new temporary exhibition gallery and down to the new shoe gallery. And then we can go out onto the roof terrace as well.
So if I can just find my way back to the presentation. So when we developed the design, we were dealing with a client who really needed to see options to tell us what they liked. And these were some of the options very early on that we came up with following very much a form follows function approach. And what we realised and what the museum eventually told us is that they wanted the design to be light and airy. And so rather than expressed frame or intricate framing, they wanted this sort of more simple approach at the bottom here and we took that forward and developed it more. Um, we looked at precedent studies of other museum extensions naturally and I think of particular note were the Art Museum in Nantes by Stanton Williams. I think there we really like the materiality and also the simplicity of form and how that sits against the historic architecture either side. And then also the National Gallery in Denmark by C.F. Moller. That was a, a really interesting precedent in terms of its connection to the existing building and the use of glazing. Um, in terms of materials for the extension, we wanted to pick up on materials used in the detailing on the surrounding buildings. And so we looked at sandstone and slate slate picking up on the roof and the blue brick detailing, sandstone on the sills and other detailing around the site. But we wanted to use that on a larger scale and in a more in a more clean way. So with that in mind, we looked at options again with the museum client for how that form might look. Um, again, form follows function was the order of the day. So we have essentially a link at the back here and that was important that the arch was included. So it's form follows function, but also the form had to follow this arch and make sure that was encapsulated inside because we knew that would be a key landmark to use within the building. And then possibly defining the cafe space as something a bit separate. The roof terrace is obviously always going to be visible from outside and then the shoe gallery at the bottom here was a bit of a challenge because we didn't want or didn't need any windows so how do we deal with that and then also there's the possibility that in the future this could split off and become the national shoe museum so the fire exit door had to double as a potential entrance in the future obviously with some minor amendments. So the bottom right hand option here was the one that we took forward and developed further. And this was the final design, which we uh, had some pre-app meetings with planning. There were some developments following that meeting, but this was the final outcome. And I think here it achieves what we we're aiming, which is that it's an obvious modern addition. So it allows you to read the history of the site quite clearly. It also attracts passing interest. So this isn't the entrance, but as you walk along Angel Street and you have a view into this courtyard, it obviously attracts interest and makes you want to go in and see what's going on. And also the external form aids wayfinding when you do enter the museum off Guildhall Road, because as you come in and you see the angled windows, etc., you realise that you're in that element of building that you saw from the outside. And then also realise that you're a story up and there's an element below you, which we've articulated as a different material here in a sort of slate plinth. And then this is the finished building here, which I think you'll agree is pretty similar to the proposed design. Um, the building's not occupied yet because the collections haven't been installed and uh, there's still some final snagging going on. So we don't have the final photos, but we do have a few before and afters, which I'll go through now. So starting with the reception entrance, that's the before on the left and the after on the right. So it's still quite similar, but really we just modernized this area and cleaned it up. Spent a long time trying to create a dynamic reception desk 
which uh, yeah we worked quite hard with it felt like designing another building in itself there but we wanted to comply with the requirements of part m but keep the desk sort of clean and not institutional looking and then before and after the link so originally that was the ramped link on the left there that connected the two council owned properties and there was this strange alley that the museum had access into with their condensers in there etc which they called pigeon alley because it was just filthy and useless um, and yeah i think you can see it's quite a transformation there that we've really opened it up and i think one of the things that i'm most proud of and pleased with is the arch that we've re revealed and the way that that's come up and works as a focal point in the space is really quite pleasing um, also we used glazing so you've got a glass floor on the right here as you walk in to the extension and that allows you a view down into the shoe gallery which aids with wayfinding because so we we know that having an upper ground floor on the entrance level can be a bit disorientating so just that glimpse down lets you realize that you have to find a staircase and get down a level to find the shoe gallery and then the glazing at the top there just lets light into the back of what is quite a deep plan but it also creates that separation to the existing building uh, the cafe space before and after which is in the Guildhall road block this was quite pleasing because existing it was a corridor with quite thick walls and we really managed to clear out the that corridor wall we, we cleared out all the intermediate walls left some existing structure but the corridor and that space that was cellular offices is now completely open and it's really quite a nice cafe space so down now into the shoe gallery so top right there you can see the glazing that i mentioned a minute ago that you could look down through you can now look back up through that glazing again aiding wayfinding and at the back of the plan there you can see the existing stair where you would have just come down and through so existing that was again the, this pigeon alley and it had some of the more interesting existing architecture with the existing bars and the small windows and some of those are still visible when you look through the vaulted structure that you see here the existing use of that vaulted structure was um, essentially rather run down staff accommodation for the museum and kitchenettes need a lot of attention a lot of damp proofing work so we took a lot of time stripping the paint off that during construction and yeah the end result is quite nice we would have liked to have had a bit more brick on show on these piers but um with the sensitivity of the collections we had to line those for um damp proofing with a sort of breathable system and ventilated skirtings so looking into the courtyard existing it was really used as a car park with that ugly link and proposed now we've got the extension as you see um one of the nice things during the project was we thought we we're gonna have to have a massive substation here which would have rather ruined the courtyard but we managed to negotiate with the county council and get that substation put onto their land to the west of the jail block and also this courtyard was originally going to be tarmac but during the project everybody realized what a nice space it could be and what an asset it could be to the museum so with paving which the council had in a depot because it was left over from other paving projects around the county we um, managed to get this uh, paved with free material cost basically just labor only and it's proper nice sandstone paving as well so that's pleasing um, now we've got a few photos and renders so this is the entrance of the museum now with new branding and flyers we worked with creative good as the exhibition consultants and designers and they also um, provided a lot of the graphic design and then you go go through into the entrance through again this was a render of the proposed reception this is as it ended up and 
into the link. So once we hope that once the link's populated, this is the sort of look that we'll get. We've got almost this exact furniture um, sitting on site, ready to be unwrapped. And yeah, we're really hoping to, we're looking forward to seeing life in this building. But that is the link as it sits at the moment. And then that's the cafe space as it sits at the moment with access onto the roof terrace. And then down the stairs from here into the cafe on Guildhall Road. This is the temporary exhibition gallery, which um, is a bit of a black box at the moment, although there are removable panels over the windows and in the end of the building, we've retained some of the windows with a bit of daylighting, but because of the nature of the, of the items they might be bringing in here, the museum decided that black box was really the way forward. Um, interest in this space because it will be refreshed regularly. And so this is one of the item, one of the areas where the museum could put on ticketed events. And yeah, it's one of the spaces that will keep people returning, hopefully, as this changes over regularly and adds, adds interest. And then downstairs to a picture of the shoe gallery. I was actually there the other day, but didn't get a good enough photograph. But now that the lighting has been turned on and the case lights are on, this space is looking even better than this image. But um, this gives you a taste of the feel of the space. So we're under the extension here and you go through there into the vaulted part of the existing museum building. And so this is my final slide. This is a 3D model, 3D printed model that we created for the museum. And the challenge here was to create a model that could be taken apart to show off the internal parts of the building and really explain that to people. Uh, so after quite a few attempts on the 3D printer, because some of the pieces were a bit fiddly, this is the model that we produced. And that will be on show in the museum in the link when it opens. So that's me, thank you. That's brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Ty. Fantastic project and thanks for sharing it with us. I think it's a really successful modern addition to the existing and it really does what you've done. It really enhances that existing building. It's, I really look forward to visiting that as I'm sure a lot of people do. Um, we have got a couple of questions, um, so I'll ask those first. So. Uh, one of them being, what was the historic building structure? Was there any cast iron involved in that? Um, the historic building structure was essentially low bearing masonry. So the demolition that we had to um, that we had to propose and then that the builder had to achieve was through some particularly thick openings, some of them up to a metre thick. So they um, in the end, the strategy that they employed was to core holes and to saw cut that. But we weren't really dealing with any existing frame structure as such. We were bearing on to the existing load bearing masonry. OK, um, we do have another question. Um, was the programme affected by any of these sort of discoveries that you had and how did did sort of working with almost a bit of an archaeological dig um, affect your programme? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, we we didn't find anything of archaeological interest that stopped the works. There was boreholes and archaeological works to start with, and that found that it was a lot of made ground in the courtyard. The Guildhall, uh, sorry, the old jail block has actually been through so many uses. So it was a jail for a while, not very long. It was then purchased by the Salvation Army who completely gutted it apart from the lower ground floor and created sort of a multi-storey tiered seating hall in there. It was then a, water, a spring water bottling factory for a while. Well, actually I might've got that the wrong way around. It might've been a spring water bottling factory before the Salvation Army. 
But anyway, then at some point, the floors were reintroduced in that building. So that does in portions have a frame structure actually, but um, we weren't amending that structure. There was a fire, which you might have seen in the news because uh, there was a break in and not arson as such, but somebody had decided to start a little fire to keep themselves warm. That luckily only affected one of the floors that was going to be vacant, but it did add more works into the project as we had to deal with a bit of water damage and a lot of smoke damage on that floor. And as with all of these difficult refurbishment and remodeling type projects, there are unforeseen that you come across and tricky bits of detailing, but we worked with a contractor to deal with them as they came along. Excellent. Um, and I, I think um, uh, another question that uh, is going to come up is, is there an anticipated opening date for it yet? Obviously, there's a lot of unknowns at the moment, um, but do you know if there is any uh, planned dates going forward? I have to be careful with what I say, so not to upset the council, but I think that their official line at the moment is end of this year or early next year is their target. So they are now moving the collections into place. And so uh, that's, uh, that's their target, which I can't wait for, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, I haven't got any more um, questions come through uh, from any of the viewers. So I think we'll wrap it up there. So um, thanks ever so much, Tom, for sharing that with us. Hopefully we can all get to arrange a an NSA out in to view it all yeah, that'd be great. Um, in the not too distant future. And um, I'd just like to drop in as well for anyone that is watching, um, the next online event will be the uh, AGM, which is scheduled for Wednesday 30th of September. So we will send out a notification and a link to that um, via Mike Balcom at the RBA. Um, and that just leaves me again really to say thanks very much Tom for doing that and to Lucy as well for arranging and working with the team's meeting for us. Um, it's been brilliant and um, thanks very much. Thank you.